Let's see. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to give it a second so more people can enter the webinar. Um, congratulations on another amazing Give Local NRV. Um, we're going to start here shortly and cover just a couple different things to kind of wrap up post event. So thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll get started in a second. Alrighty, so welcome to the Give Local NRV post webinar. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am a project manager for Give Local NRV with Mighty Cause, uh, the platform provider for the event. So for pretty much for today's post webinar, we're going to talk through uh, different ways how you can kind of close the loop on the 2022 giving event, um, review how you can continue using the platform on a year round basis. Uh, and of course, we are also going to make the big announcement for this year's winning for uh, winners for this year's event. We also have Jess and Lindsay on with us. Um, I'm going to pass the mic over to both of them so they can say a few congratulatory words to you all. Um, go for it. Hi, everyone. Good to be with you today. Uh, and just wanted to echo what uh, Sarah said. Great job this year. It was really fun to be a part of the event. I think probably most of you know that I just started at the Community Foundation at the end of April. Um, so it was fun to uh, have a, a really big project to work on when I first started. Um, and Lorraine, yes, I have gotten some rest and I hope everyone else did too. A um, couple 1 a.m.s in a row, I'm not used to that. And I think uh, Jess is finishing up lunch so um, we can uh, maybe hear from her later. Sounds good. Uh, all right, so I'm going to show you a quick agenda slide. Um, like I said, we're going to review some tips on how to follow up post giving event, kind of talk about how you can find and use your donor reports from the event, uh, look at some disbursement dates for you all. Um, we'll also kind of share how you can continue getting the most out of the platform even after the event has ended. Uh, because as most of you probably know, some might be new, uh, this platform is available to you year round. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to type them into the Q&A chat bubble um, during our presentation. It'll be kind of a quick presentation. So if you think of anything, feel free to send them over. You don't need to wait till the end. Um, so giving day follow up. So with Give Local NRV complete, it's time to consider your follow up post event if you haven't already done so. Um, you're really gonna wanna go beyond the platform tools uh, and our automated thank yous on the donation page. So if you haven't already, start planning your thank yous to donors, anything like making a video, sharing a personal photo of your staff um, can be really good for this, really trying to make a connection with your donors after they've um, contributed to your campaign. Um, when thanking donors and continuing communication with your donors, you definitely want to be sure to talk about the impact of the funds that you raised during your event. Um, and overall, the goal is to really close the loop on your campaign. So this means if you are fundraising for something specific, say a new piece of equipment, any improvements to a building, um, anything that you were campaigning for, you'll really Sarah, just want. Um, yeah. um, sorry, it might be me. Is anyone else having trouble hearing Sarah? I, I have issues in my office so, with Wi-Fi, so um, just want to me. I can take out my headphones. And I'm able, I'm able to hear okay on my end. Okay, it's probably me again. Jess, I'm going to come join you in your yep. office. Yeah, come on in. <laughs> okay, well, if anyone can't hear me at some point, just let me know. I'm uh, using a headset. Um, alrighty, so pretty much just uh, at the end of the campaign, you really want to close that loop. So like I was saying, if you were fundraising for something specific, um, even if you were fundraising for a general fund, just kind of tying that loop, making the connection with the donor, letting them know where their dollars will go, thanking them, um, and then just continuing that communication with them throughout the rest of the year is really key. Uh, updating them, sending emails periodically on your progress. What you'll want to do is just make sure you keep them connected to your organization. You don't want you know, a donor to give during the event and then the, or, uh, the communication just dies after that. Um, if you have new donors who gave during the event, you'll definitely want to start making sure that you have an onboarding plan in place for new donors. 
um, you want them to come back to donate to you again. So you can consider things, um, kind of creative little ways to make a connection, make these new donors feel seen, uh, let them know that they're appreciated. Uh, a lot of organizations consider mailing a welcome packet as a fun way to get them onboarded. Um, you can create an automated email journey where they can start to get information about what you do year round and why it's really important to continue to support your work. So overall, thanking and appreciating your donors is going to be essential to retaining donors. Um, you know, you might be thinking, well, this is a lot of time and energy, but it really costs less to retain an existing donor than to acquire a new one. So all the time, any money, any effort you put into thanking your donors, you know, creating welcome packets, all that's gonna be very well spent. Donors that are feeling appreciated and valued on an ongoing basis are definitely likely to stick with your organization for the long run um, and just really continue providing you that valuable support for years to come. Um, reports and disbursements. So within your organization profile, you're gonna be able to view your donation report and as well as your disbursements. Um, you can download a detailed donation report uh, and a CSV file at any time through your organization profile to thank and follow up with individual donors, um, to tabulate kind of your donation values, number of donors. So you can find all this information within your reports, uh, all donations tab on your organization dashboard. Um, from this section, you can filter by the giving event itself to pull your data. Uh, so if you go in there, you can select Give a Local NRV 2022, uh, and you can pull specific data just from the event timeframe. Um, you can also select custom timeframes, because like I said, this platform is available to you on a year-round basis. So you can pull uh, donation reports uh, from any point of during the year, just you'll enter in the custom timeframe. Um, regarding disbursements for the 2020, sorry, 2022 event, the money is going to be dispersed by July 10th. So in general, electronic dispersals through Mighty Calls are going to happen twice a month on a consistent schedule of like the 10th and the 25th of each month. So um, that's if you're set up with EFT, that's twice a month. If you're not set up with EFT, checks are dispersed once a month on the 10th of the month. So you can expect a check mailed to um, the legal mailing address that's listed in your organization profile. Um, and if you need to check this legal address, you can see it uh, on file within your settings organization profile tab. Um, continuing the momentum. So this is going to be really important. Um, even though the Give Local NRV 2022 event has ended, this platform, Give Local NRV and Mighty Cause is available to you and your organization on a year round basis, which is very cool. Um, so just be sure to take full advantage you know, of all the tools and the resources that are available to your organization during the year. Um, I kind of screenshotted and listed here everything you have continued access to within your organization profile. Um, now is a really great time to kind of take some slow time to dive deeper into any of the tools and features available to you that you might have not had time to kind of explore during the busyness of the campaign. You may have been like hyper focused on certain areas of your page and not been able to check out others. So if there's any features you didn't get a chance to check out, just take a moment now, you know, things are slower um, where you can kind of explore those tools available to you. Um, if you do feel like you could benefit from really slowing down and having someone walk you through your profile page, you can always set up a demo with a member of the Mighty Cause team. Um, they can kind of tour you around, screen share with you, take you a bit more in depth in the different features that we have, as well as show you any kind of additional advanced features we have available. So if you're looking at this and wondering if there's some way to integrate with Salesforce or MailChimp, um, Google Analytics and that, we do have that option available. Um, so if that's something you're curious about, you can always set up a demo. Um, these are kind of the advanced features that are available that you could also do a free trial for. Um, so uh, this is this is uh, part of the advanced package, but of course the slide before this is showing you what you have uh, continued access through to throughout the year. Um, super exciting news! We are very excited to also announce that in celebration of Give Local NRV's 10th anniversary next year. Um, starting this fall for all participating Give Local NRV orgs, Mighty Cause has gifted two new advanced features um, for use on all of the Give Local NRV organization pages, and this is going to be text to give and opportunities management. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit next year uh, for, well, it's not totally next year, but in the fall we can kind of talk more about this uh, um, and do like a deeper dive and a tutorial for you all. 
um, but you can utilize text to give for campaigns or general fund needs. Text to give is going to provide your donors pretty much the ability to donate directly from any smartphones or any devices. Um, in a nutshell, you're going to create a unique keyword to set it up. Um, once the donor texts your keyword to a phone number, they're going to receive a response. Um, they'll click the link in their text message. They can complete their donation within this uh, kind of message interface in whatever amount they choose. Medicaus is then going to send their donation information, um, confirmation receipt. Um, and it's really cool just because text to give is going to provide you another really wonderful avenue and opportunity for your donors to continue donating to your cause uh, in another easy way. Um, briefly on the opportunities tool, which is a brand new feature uh, on Mighty Cause, it's going to help you share new and ongoing volunteer opportunities, um, any calendar events you might have, help you manage current opportunities, um, really just expand your reach within your uh, support network, your donors, anyone who's supporting you quickly and easily. Um, new opportunities you create are going to be added directly to your organization page under a new section that's going to be called Get Involved. Um, volunteers can click on that opportunity that you create to learn more about it. They can click a register button found in the bottom right corner. Um, if the opportunity is managed directly on the platform, the Mighty Cause platform, when an individual registers for your opportunity or your workshop or your event, um, they'll receive a pop-up notification. They'll be emailed. Um, if you are managing, you can also have the opportunity to manage your um, event on a third-party platform like Eventbrite if you need them to get a ticket. Um, so when the, unit, when the user is going to register for an opportunity uh, like that, they'll be taken directly to the link you provide when you create your opportunity. Um, and you very easily can view all of the individuals that have registered for your opportunity within your opportunities tool. So those are two super cool new features we're excited to have you explore um, and just really help you continue engaging with your donors and supporters. Um, already, I'm going to pass it back over to Jess and Lindsay for our big 2022 winner announcement. You're muted. Yours and uh, okay. Go for it. Um, and your sound is off. I can turn my on. Okay, I'll turn it off. And yours. Okay, sorry. We're we're, we're having um. <laughs> you're okay. in the same room with the same mic, so you're good. I you don't <laughs> want an echo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm sitting right next to Jess, but my internet's unstable. So um, <laughs> uh, so everyone, um, uh, we we uh, probably most of you have seen the leaderboards. Um, but we have a couple of grants that we haven't announced yet, so we just wanted to go through um the the winners um and uh just say great job again um and we realized when we were counting up the grants that we had actually miscounted but it was a good miscount we thought we had fifteen thousand dollars available it's actually sixteen five um and so we had 18 grants available this year um and we're excited to to share so if sarah if you want to advance the slide thanks um, so early giving was a lot of fun to watch this year, um, and to see, uh, everyone kind of kick June off, um, with, with, uh, some, some friendly competition and, uh, probably a lot of you saw, uh, Spring House, um, uh, come in, um, uh, with, with uh, come in hot, uh, frankly, with their donations and, uh, they get a lot of parents and students involved. So it's pretty exciting. That was pretty exciting to watch. So they, um, uh, ran away with the Early Giving Superstar Grant, um, and, and that one is given to the organization that raises the most money during that period. So they get an extra thousand dollars for that. Um, and then for most money raised, so uh, as probably folks know, but if uh, just to refresh on how we approach it is, um, we uh, if someone um, gets a grant um, that knocks them out of the running for the other grants. Um, and they're also eligible for a, a power hour or a golden ticket as well, um, but try to make it so um, one organization win isn't winning every category. Um, so uh, so that meant that even though Springhouse had the most amount raised um, on our money raised, uh, uh, the, the grant for this one actually went to the YMCA for, uh, who came in second. So great job to you all um, and exciting to um, see what you all are gonna do with the food truck. Um, for medium and large organizations, Floyd Center for the Arts uh, 
uh, beat the Montgomery Museum just by a little bit. Uh, I, you all were working so hard and we saw that. Um, uh, and uh, so uh, nice job to everyone there, but Floyd um, came out with it at the end. And then leading lights um, for small organizations. And just another, um, I probably should have said this in the beginning and you all probably remember, but we determine those categories based, based on budget size um, for everyone who submits for the year. So once we closed registration, we looked at the whole list and um, did it by third. So who's in the the um, the lower third um, for budgets, then the middle, and the then the um, the top, and that will shift a little bit each year. Um, so congratulations, to all of you guys. Um, and uh, so and then moving into most unique donors for large organizations. Um, I mean, these numbers are pretty amazing. So St. John Newman Academy, Academy um, got, uh, had 246 donations. Um, medium uh, organization was Calfee Community Center, Community and Cultural Center at 127. Um, and I know I saw them on social media a lot and they were, uh, did a great job there. So, um, and, and same thing with uh, Giles County Christian Service Mission for small organizations, they had 42 posts. So way to go for all of you. Um, that was all really fun to watch. Um, so Sarah, if you'd like to go to the next one. Um, and then uh, Springhouse also won another grant um, for most money raised using peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools. Um, and so how those work is um, uh, your supporters can set up their own individual funding fundraising um, uh, page, and they had 17 different pages um, and raised a little over 16,000, I believe. So um, they, they really use that tool well. So it'd be great to hear more from them, kind of their strategy about how, how they utilize that. Um, and it's, I think that they're probably a great organization for that in a school setting um, to engage their constituents, but definitely see it um, uh, being used with other organizations. And then early giving superstars. Um, so, or pardon me, giving day superstars. Uh, so th this one was both hard to choose and fun to choose because we saw so many organizations out there working so hard. Um, and just uh, using creative ways to engage donors, great PR strategies. Um, so we just talked among the staff about folks who we thought really did a really awesome job of kind of getting into the spirit of Give Local. Um, and we thought that the Montgomery Museum of Art and History and the Wilderness Road Regional Museum both did really wonderful jobs um, this year. And I, I think that these, these grants would be fun to give out to a bunch more people. Um, but just had two available this year and just wanted to say great job to you all. Um, and we saw how hard you were working and um, it was a lot of fun to watch. So congratulations to everybody. Awesome, thanks. Congratulations uh, to all of our winners this year. Um, so two final things that I wanted to just quickly touch on. Um, we would love to hear your feedback on your experience this year. So we have a feedback form on the site. So if you just head to the givelocalnrv.org site, you'll see a link, um, a button in the nav bar for feedback. Um, it's six questions, super short. We would just love to hear um, anything you thought worked well, anything that you would like to see improved, anything you want to see more of. If there was a, you know, a prize, I think um, the team would love to hear just, you know, your overall thoughts, anything you would like to see. Um, so you can head over to the site and take that. Uh, and then just as a uh, reminder, because this platform is available to you year round, this means that our support is also available to you year round. So I just wanna make sure you have all the resources, the contact info for you as you continue to just kind of get the most out of the platform. Um, utilizing the features and the tools available to you. If there's any features you're curious about, um, if you need help with anything, uh, just let us know, let the Mighty Cause to support team know. Um, and of course, if you wanna check out a demo, uh, you can reach out to our team and we can get that set up for you as well. Um, so if anyone has any final questions, uh, we can take those now or else um, thank you to all of you for taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, and congratulations on an amazing event this year. Um, Sarah, I'll just add a, another plug for filling out the feedback form. It's six questions. So we tried to make it short, but um, any comments help w whether it, something frustrated you or something went really well or um, what, whatever the feedback is, we're, we are reading all of them and it really helps. 
Um, and we also have a question on there about potentially changing the format of giving day next year um, and thinking about um, it doing it from noon to noon uh, versus midnight to midnight. And we haven't made that decision yet. And so we're really looking for feedback um, to hear from folks um, about what they think. Um, and we're still working on uh, giving out t-shirts. So it's just first come, first serve if you would like them. Um, I I've already pushed t-shirts on a number of people, but uh, please come and get them. We'd love <laughs> to get them out. Don't want them just sitting around, um, but uh, hoping to get them in earlier next year. So maybe pickup will be easier. Um, and then one more thing that I wanted to add, uh, we have a question about um, pulling your donation report. And I just wanted to mention, um, how to do that, because I, I had the same question being the new one at the foundation. When I, I went in to download our, our donor report, it looked like it was just downloading a file for offline donations, but um, just make sure you go and look at your downloads, because what it does is it, it um, you'll have two separate files that download. So one is the offline donation spreadsheet, and then one is the online donation spreadsheet. And so it might just take a little bit um to to download but both of those should show up but if they're not for some reason just let's know and we can help you out there sounds good um well i don't see any questions coming through so i just want to congratulate you all one last time um you've worked so hard i know there's a lot of build up and prep for this event so i hope you can all just take some time to celebrate um all that you've accomplished within your organization so uh, thank you for joining us today, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.